Good morning, you guys. This is Howard Crampton Jr. with Reunite with Passion and Discovering Purpose. Today's topic is going to be on the art and science of making love all of the time. Sounds like an exciting topic. How often? All of the time. Yeah, all of the time. I'm not just talking about the physical act of making love behind doors, but in experiencing love itself and how we actually create it. So what is love first of all? You know, there's so many different definitions and some maybe just even undefinable when we think about what love is at its essence, right? All we know is it's almost just like a feeling that we experience. It's an experience in itself. But love is also, it's not a want. It's not just a desire. It's not something that we choose to live with or without. Uh, it's actually a human need. And you've heard studies about puppies being born and when they don't have that tactile stimulation being touched and licked or, you know, by their moms or their parents, well, they actually have stunted growth. And the same thing with babies. They've actually done studies with babies as well who have been nurtured and other ones who have not been nurtured and this growth hormone that actually develops as a result of it. So let's move forward with what is this art and science of making love? Well, let's start with the science part of it first, all right? There's actually a science to creating love. And when I say make love all of the time, love's got to come through you first. A lot of times we think we can just go to a group of people or we can go to an event or maybe an exotic island, right? And once we get there, then I can experience love. But it's not true. We can go there. We may be able to experience it for a second, but there'll be times where it's gone too. Maybe you've experienced it yourself. It's got to come through you. You know, when we are unfulfilled in love and we go to these other places we actually take we take away from other people's experiences it's almost like this neediness that comes through us right and when we're around other people they might feel drained or maybe you have the experience too where you've just needed it to be around somebody and they kind of start distancing themselves from you because they feel they feel drained energetically well, how about when you're completely fulfilled in love then? Imagine that for a second. Just close your eyes if you can. Take a deep breath. And imagine just in this moment right now, there's nothing more that you need. There's not a dollar or a dime more. There's not a person that needs to be in your life in this moment right here, right now. You're completely fulfilled. You have everything that you need. You're hydrated enough. You're fed enough. And you have all this love coming through you. And imagine intensifying it by 10 times. And then you have this group of people you want to go and hang out with. And you show up, even if it's at work, your coworkers, your family, your friends. You're completely fulfilled. You go to this place. You're making all this love inside of yourself. Not to yourself, but inside of yourself. And you show up to these places. And naturally, people are going to be attracted to you. You smile unconditionally. You hug people. You high five them. You know, you have these conversations where you're just constantly giving and giving and giving because you have so much love inside of you that you just want to share it with everybody. You don't need anything else from anybody. You're just happy and content knowing that they're here to share in this experience or magnify this experience with you, right? Now, all this love, it comes through you first. So then how do I do it? Howard, tell me, what is the science part of it? Well, there's three different parts. You know, there's a state I've talked about. We have our state, our mo emotional, mental state of well-being. And it has uh, three points. It looks like a triangle. And first, your physiological uh, or posture, your physiological state or your posture. You know, where are your head? Where is your head? Where are your shoulders? Are you breathing deep and full or are you breathing short and shallow? You know, these things have uh, an effect on your brain chemistry and what chemicals are actually being produced as a result. If you're walking around with your head down low and your shoulders shrugged all the time and your breath is really short and constricted and you're mumbling, what signals is that sending to your brain? It's almost like survival mode, right? But what happens when you're really excited and you're talking loud and you're clapping your hands and you're moving, you're really communicating with your body, right? Now your brain says, hey, we need to start keeping up with this body here or else there's going to be some kind of imbalance. Well, the next part is your focus. What are you focusing on to feel in love? You know, when you see that person across the room and you make that eye contact, what is it that creates that feeling? And it's something that you're focusing on. It's not the person in themselves. The person is just a means. We see somebody because we can see multiple people. We can see multiple things. We see an exotic island and we feel the same way, right? 
So it's the meaning that we give to this person. There's also that chemistry in between you two, which we can't necessarily put our finger on, can we? But we definitely feel something. It's there. There's definitely a chemistry. And you focus on that feeling too and you think, oh my gosh, this feels so good. Now, the, the third thing is your language. What are you telling yourself? This feels so good, right? This is so amazing. And again, these are all signals that you're sending to your brain and your brain is transcribing them pretty much and processing them and what it's doing is just producing other chemicals that really make you feel even better and, and to maintain that state, right? So that's the science of it. You know, the way that you move your body, the things that you focus on and uh, your language and how you speak definitely is a process. It's the science part of making love within yourself. Well, how about the art? The art is how you go about expressing it. You know, you are unique. Every single one of you watching this video are all unique in your purpose in life and who you are as an individual, as a man, as a woman, as a mother or a father, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, you know, coworker. You're all unique in who you are and what gifts that you get to bring into life. So the way that you go about expressing love, you know, some people like to give hugs, other people just a handshake. Some people smile a lot more, other people will give compliments, right? So how you go about expressing love within yourself is the art in itself. And art is different by everybody, isn't it? We can sit here and look at a painting. You can look at the painting behind me. You know, for some person, they see a lot of red and they might think fear. Other people see a lot of red and they think romantic, right? So who's right and who's wrong? Neither of them. It's just the meaning that they're giving to that experience. So there's your art. There's your science in making love. Now go out and do this with your partner. Remember to be fulfilled. The more fulfilled you are, the more you can fulfill other people too. And you're not always taking away. So start with you. And then you can take this in with your friends, your family, your coworkers, anywhere you go. You can make love all of the time. All right? So go to Real Love and Marriage. Post your comments below. Post your questions below. If you're watching this on YouTube, shoot over to realloveandmarriage.com. Go to the blog section. Find this video there too. And comment. Because... You end up might find, if you're single, you might find your soulmate there, somebody who wants to communicate too. And you have this conversation, you're sharing all this stuff, somebody else sees it and goes, oh my God, this person is magnificent. They're outstanding. You know, maybe you're in a relationship already and you're seeing other partners share too. And you think, wow, these people are so cool. Maybe we can connect with them too, right? So go to realloveandmarriage.com, post in the blog section below. Give me a call, 661-524-6093. If you have any questions, you can also register for your complimentary 30-minute consultation. And I know for some of you, you're, too, you're not ready yet to talk specifically over the phone and open up and share a bunch of stuff. So I encourage you to send me an email, howard at realloveandmarriage.com. Again, that's Howard at realloveandmarriage.com and just inquire. You know, ask me some questions. What's the program about? I'm in this position, what can I do? And also in the website, realloveandmarriage.com, you can sign up for your uh, most valued needs assessment. And you'll see that in the box at the top. It's a little quiz I created to help you understand what your most valued needs are and how you see the world. So that way you can better make love even more often. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Go to realloveandmarriage.com. Give me a call 661-524-6093 or shoot me an email at howard at realloveandmarriage.com. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.